Yo, what's good, everyone? It is JSXC here, and today I'm giving you guys our NCPL Season 4 Week 4 matchup against the Ottawa Savalis, coached by JP. I almost forgot his name. But of course, as yours truly, I am your coach, JSXC, coach of the Big Island Weasels. As of now, uh, in week four, well, yeah, in week four, we are both one and two. I still believe I should be two and one, but honestly, there's not really much I can do about it. There is 13 weeks in this league, so by being one and two, that's three games. We do have 11 more games, so if we do win out from here, that means, yeah, like 11 plus one, that's 12. We'll, we'll be like 12 and two. So 12 and two is the best record we can go for at this point, and hopefully we can, hopefully, yeah, stop saying hopefully, damn. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, we'll be able to uh, win out or at least just make playoffs because top six make it. So, by being one and two, I'm kind of sketchy about how well I'm going to do in this league. But hopefully, I can uh, I can pull through with the team that we have. But uh, as you can see on your screen, we're just getting rise to this team builder before we get into the battle. We got the Ottawa Savalis drafts, and as you can see, he has a pretty terrifying draft. But there's one big thing that caught my eye when I started prepping, and hopefully, you guys will. Well, not hopefully, but. I just want to see if you guys can get the idea or like the main thing that caught my eye, my, caught my attention when I was prepping. But first up, he has the Mega Diancy, which is Mega. Base 110 Pokemon, I think like base 160 in both physical and defense. Not defense, physical and special attack. Uh, really low HP, pretty poor defenses after a Mega Evolves. But regardless, Magic Bounce user, Rocks, Moonblast, Calm Mind, Earth Power, HP Fire. Typically what you'll normally see, Power Jam or even Diamond Storm mixed. He has Milotic, very bulky water type with Recover and Scald and Ice Beam. Kind of, it's kind of like a one-sided Pokemon. Like The only thing that you really change about Milotic is like whether you go Physical Defenses, Spadef, or like Mixed. Because you could be like Flame Orb, which increases your Physical Defense and even like Max Spadef. Or it could just be like a standard Mixed set with Leftovers. So yeah, Scald, Ice Beam, maybe a Hidden Power, Haze, Toxic, Dragon Tail is typically what you'll see. He has Tang Growth. Very fat. I don't know why the spaghetti is blue. I don't know why it has red hot dogs for nails. But it's standing, it's alive, and it's all well and healthy. But this thing gets Regenerator. Very awesome physical defense. Very poor spadef. And the only time it's gonna have good spadef is if you run like max defense. Not max defense. Max spadef, max HP, a soul vest. And that's typically the only bulky spadef tangles you'll ever see. But regardless, it does get a variety of moves of coverage. It can be mixed as well in terms of its uh, attacking power. Lee Storm, Earthquake, Knockoff. Um, like it's Leech Seed, Synthesis, so like a lot of things you can run on this tank growth. Mew, very versatile, like you literally don't know what to do based on 100 across the board. Mammal Swine could be rocks, it could be like Focus Dash lead rocks, it could be like offensive with Life Orb, Icicle Crash, Ice Shard, Earthquake, Stone Edge, Superpower, Knockoff of the sort, Dawn Fan, kind of like Mammal Swine except um, it doesn't get Ice Shard Stab, it has Sturdy, a little more bulkier, and uh, it has Rapid Spin, so yeah, that's one of the main things. Buzzwool, very scary, Beast Bush Pokemon. Four times week to flying. Uh, we're gonna try and uh, exploit that if he brings it anyway. Pretty slow and really bad spadef, but pretty good fizz def and it does get roost recovery. You can run a salt vest so that makes up for its spadef and like I think it has decent HP, really good attack power. And then I think with a beast boost, it can run scarf as well. Don't underestimate scarf buzzwool. Don't under don't underestimate a four legged, six foot tall bug with a scarf. You don't you don't want to mess with that, bro. We got the we got the easy bake oven. Um, really bad HP, but um, overheat Volt Switch, maybe some hidden power, Trick, Paint Split, uh, pretty much like every other Rotom except for its typing. Gucha, very awesome spin death, pretty good HP, hits really hard, variety of coverage, Sludge Bomb, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Dragon Pulse, Dragon Tail, Outrage, Power Whip, all that good stuff. Gooey, awesome, Sap Sipper, you know, Sap Sipper. I'll give you a hint, it relates to Sap Sipper. Yeah, I already gave away the answer. Um, it has Gengar, but cool, base 110 Pokemon, very, pretty fast, decently fast. Uh, Ghost Poison, no Levitate ability, so you, this thing can catch like some, this thing can catch a Mudslap must must and die. Um, Slush Bomb, Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, Dazzling Gleam. Um, you can run Knock Off if you want to be cheeky. Destiny Bond if you want to be cool. will wisp for like a utility set. Crawdont, interesting crab. Um, pretty slow, but with the d dance it hits really hard, especially with that adaptability. Knock Off, Crab Hammer, Liquidation, Aqua Jet. Porygon Z hits really hard with that Tri-Attack adaptability or Download. I wish it got traced, that'd be awesome. Uh, Try attack Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, Dark Pulse. No Z conversion, so screw that. Terrakion, fast, base 108, uh, rock fighting type, gets rocks as well. Um, could be a setup, could be a setup sweeper with like rock polish SD or just SD with life orb. 
Rock Polish with Life Orb, Stone Edge, Close Combat, Quick Attack. And last but not least, he has Alakazam. Very fast. I'm pretty sure it's like based on 20 speed. It's really hard. Also gets knockoff. It's kind of like Gengar in the sense, where they're both really fast, both really frail. But uh, it gets a variety of coverage. It's just the typing's different, but they share like the same weaknesses. But other than that, let's get right into this. You guys have been staring at this green monkey for a pretty good while now. We got Baldwin, the shiny semi stage, because you know, we gotta bring that shine because we out here. We got the Yachi Berry with the overgrowth because we don't need gluttony. I don't need gluttony. I don't need my Yachi Berry to pop at 50% when I actually it won't activate at 50%, but still, I don't need it at that moment. But we got the Yachi Berry mainly just for the Mammal Swine. Actually, no. Yeah, j mainly just for the Mammal Swine because that's the only thing that gets Ice Shard. Uh, considering his team semi stage outspeeds everything except Alakazam. Terrakion, Mega Diancie, and Gengar. So between Gengar and Alakazam, I do have a Drapion, so I don't expect him to bring both. I, if he brings either of them, it's going to be either of them. It's not going to be Gengar and Alakazam, because if he does do that, then Drapion just gets like two free kills with Pursuit, because I could just bring like a Max for Death Set with a Soul Vest, bring it in, click Pursuit, something dies, bring it down to a Sash, I do not care. But this is gone, because if Drapion scares out both of those Pokemon, that means Semi Sage outspeeds, um, Everything except Mega Diancie and Terrakion. Terrakion is going to be uh, kind of iffy. I do have something in the back for it. And Mega Diancie, I should be able to live like one hit. Like just one hit maybe. And I can hit it with the Leaf Storm. But we have Leaf Storm Knockoff, Giga Drain, HP Flying. Leaf Storms, they hit really hard. Giga Drain for some sort of recovery. Knockoff for like predicted switches. Maybe Knockoff the Gudra because I can't really do much to Gudra. So Knockoff is probably the best thing I could do. I can knock off the Rotom Heat. I can knock off the Mew. And HP Flying. HP Flying is only there for the Buzzle. We are modest, almost max special attack, but HP Flying is also pretty good for the tank world if it's not Spadef as Solvest. And if that's not the case, then we're just going to do some pretty good damage. And more than likely, Tangle won't be able to do anything unless it's like a Toxic or an HP Fire. But other than that, Tangle can't really touch Simi Sage. Unless it has like HP Fire, yeah, that's what I mean. But uh, after looking at Simi Sage and comparing it to his team, if you guys didn't already get it by now, 6 out of his 11 Pokemon are weak to Grass. Milotic, Mega Diancie, Donphan, Malmoswine, Terrakion, and Crawdon. Over half of his team is weak to grass. And that's crazy. So, of course, of course, Simi Sage had to come to this match. So, like, no question there. No question. No question. But next up, we had Justinian or Barbera with the leftovers. With the simple ability, we're not, we're bringing another setup sweeper like we did last week. Which actually gave us... Actually, not last week. It was against... Uh, what was it called? It was against... um. Oh, my God. Wait. Was JP... Is JP the coach of the Savalis? Oh my god, I feel so bad now. I actually don't know. I'm actually like really confused now. Okay, coach of the Autobus of Ollies. I don't know, JP was like my second week match or whatever. Or whatever. Uh, we got Substitute SD, Aqua Jet, Return, Max Attack, Adamant. Enough speed to speed creep something. I forgot. But the rest in HP and the Spences. But with my investment in my HP, I can completely set up on the Milotic for free. I can click Substitute, he'll click Scald. Won't do anything. Toxic can't go through my sub. And I can get a free SD up. And that will get, take me to plus 4. And that plus 4 return just bodies my Lodic. And like, if it has like an orb, like a flame orb, then it'll live 1. But it takes him 2 skulls to break my sub. The only thing that's won't, the only way this won't work out is if like he runs like HP Grass or like some other coverage move that does like neutral or super effective damage to the barrel. Or if he runs like Haze. If he runs Haze, that's going to be annoying. And I'm going to have to find another way to pressure it. But... This thing's this team's actually pretty weak to the barrel too. I mean like return on my Lodic, Aqua Jet on the Diancie, Dion Fan, uh Mammal Swine and Terrakion, Aqua Jet on the Gengar, Aqua Jet on the Alakazam, Aqua Jet on the Rotom Heat, Aqua Jet on the Porygon Z, um return on the Crawdon, return on the Tangled, return on the Buzzer, return on the Gudra. Like this thing just does like amazing work. Like it, it's like it was born for this battle, like honestly. But next up we have an interesting Soldier Boy Tokus set. We have Charity Bear with a super luck. We're not running that Serene Grace because we don't really have anything with status. So, you know, let's get them a crits that matter, make people salty. But we got Dazzling Gleam, Encore, Bruce, Nasty Plot, 192 in HP, 252 max speed timid. So, we are going to speed tie with the Gudra and speed tie with the Mammoth Swine, but that's only if they are max speed as well. More than likely, I don't expect either of them to be max speed because I don't see a reason for him to run max speed Mammoth Swine when, like, he doesn't really have a reason not to. And I don't think he'll expect max speed Token Kiss anyway. So, if I ever bring this in, He'll probably click Iso Crash and not Ice Shard, which would be pretty good. But we got the purpose of the set is to typically bring Toku Kiss on something and hope, like, whatever move it went for before, I click Encore, get a nasty plot up, and more than likely, my Toku Kiss is gonna attract either the Milotic, the Gengar, the Rotom Heat, or the Mega Diancie. 
like like on switching. So if it's Gengar, it's gonna be a problem. I can get some dazzling damage off. But if it's not there and it's my Lodic, I can uh, click Nasty Plot uh, on the switch, click Dazzling Gleam, force it to recover. And after it recovers, I can click Encore. I do have Roost. I have Recovery. Toxic would be the only thing that would be like problematic. But if it brings in Diancie, a plus two, a plus two Dazzling Gleam to a Mega Diancie does 90 to 106 percent. So if I get Rocks up then it's guaranteed in range of my plus two Dazzling Gleam, and Diamond Storm does like 50% to my Togekiss with a Charity Berry. So that's going to be one good way to get rid of the Diancy, which Simi Sage doesn't outspeed. But next up, we have Drape to Drapion with the Blast Hush Battle Armor. Like I said before, I am running that Max Bedef set. Um, enough speed to speed creep. I want to say speed creep a Mew that's uninvested. We got Knock Off Aqua Tail, Pursuit Toxic Spikes. Toxic Spikes is actually pretty good against this team. Like I said, the presence of Drapion alone Will probably discourage him from bringing Gengar. So other than that, he can't really top. He can't really stop my Toxic Spikes unless he brings it in when Diancy comes in, which would be like the only thing. But with Diancy, Mamoswine, and Dawnfan, and especially Rotom Heat and Terrakion, I can just click Aqua Tail on all of them, and I'll get really good damage off. And then if he does bring Alakazam or Gengar, I do have the Pursuit, so that's good there. But next up, making his debut and final appearance because we're trading him off next week we have schnitzel the pseudo -wodo. we got the assault vest rockhead we're running a complete offensive set well sort of we have head smash soccer punch explosion and wood hammer max hp max bedef sassy nature and you'll see why in a sec but this good thing wrecks his team like i said the grass weakness is huge and whatever resists grass gets bought by head smash rotom buzzwell well not made buzzwell but like I just wanted to give Pseudo Wood like some sort of like like exposure before I let it off. But this thing actually does pretty well. I can switch this thing on a Mega Dancy and take two Earth Powers and then hit it out with a Wood Hammer and a Sucker Punch. And then, yeah, that's like really good damage right there. But hopefully, she doesn't look put in the work. And the uh, reason why we have minimal speed is because we do have Peter, the Azelf. We got the Leftover Psychic, U Turn, Trick Room, and Grass Knot. JK, we are not running rocks, I forgot. We have another speed to outspeed Terrakion, I believe. No, Gengar. Gengar. Psychic for main stab. Grass not because, like I said, his grass weakness is insane. Trick room to support the Sudowodo. Sudowodo, if I can, like, dent his team early on or, like, late game or mid late game. And then we have U turn for initiative. So, that is our team. We are running. Uh, yeah, we are running, like, we're not really running offensive. I mean, as of as kind of strong as is, so, like, I decided to put more of it into HP. And if I lead this. Then I can, actually, I can actually take a hit from ammo, but if it's like a life orb knockoff, then I probably just die. But other than that, that is our team, and I spoke for like 13 minutes talking about this team. But uh, I don't know, I was I was in the mood to record, so hopefully you guys got through all that. But other than that, let's get right into this battle. Alright guys, we are back with the battle, and if you guys didn't watch the team builder, I really don't care, but if you didn't, you just skipped in, then I'm just gonna just quickly go over it. We have a Yachi Berry for attack, Simi Sage, a setup substitute for Barrel, an Encore, Charty Berry, Nasty Plot, Toka Kiss, Defensive, we got us, uh, I think it's like a Spadef Drapion, Knockout Pursuit, Toxic Spikes, we got Pseudo Widow, Spadef, Max Spadef, Max HP, uh, Head Smash, Wood Hammer, with a Soul Vest, and then we got a bulky speedy as of a grass knot and oh my god can we just look at his team for a second and just realize just like i said this man has five, six out of his 11 pokemon are weak to grass and he brought five of them he brought if he just replaced me with crawdon i swear i could have spammed like grass knot against his whole dang team but i'm not because i'm not a dick so overall let's just get right into this battle and uh yeah let's just Let's just, uh, if I can find the play button, yep, let's go with it. So here, I'm just going to leave my Azelf. And at this point, I'm thinking, um, he leads to the Mammal Swine. So here, I am bulky, and unless he's, like, Life Orb knockoff, I shouldn't die to any hit he goes for. Um, so here, like, by seeing him leading with uh, Mammal Swine, I'm assuming he's going to go for his Rocks. So we might trade Rocks here, but realistically, I'm just going to go for Grass now and get rid of this Mammal Swine, because this Mammal Swine is a pretty good threat to my team. I do have Simi Sage with the Ice Shard, but if I can, like, prevent, like, 
if I can prevent the Malastar from being a threat as much as possible, then that's going to be great. I'm pretty sure at the time I realized that I shouldn't die to anyone here, especially if he's sashed. So here I'm going to go for the Grass Knight, and it does so much damage. He goes for the Icicle Crash, and we freaking slurp that crap, dude. We're freaking shining. We're shining out here, taking Icicle Spears to the face. We don't pop, okay? Peter is here. We take those leftovers, and here I'm going to predict the Ice Shard from the Malmoswine, considering that most of his team is weak to Grass. So... I'm predicting to go for the Ice Shard, and I'm going to go into the Barrel. If he goes into Mew, predicting the Grass Knot, that's fine. I can go into Drapion. Um, you'll find out. I'll find, I'll find out after the match that that would have been a terrible play. But here, I just go for the Ice Shard. I just predict the Ice Shard. He does go for the Ice Shard as I do go into my Barrel, and that's a resistant hit. It did 20%. Like I don't even think he's boosted. It did that much. But here, I'm just gonna simply go for Aqua Jet, considering that I brought set up a barrel against JP in week two. Actually, let me let me actually go over this. Before I started this recording again, I found out that the Ottawa Savalis is Tack Attack and not JP. So, hopefully, we got that covered. I'm sorry, um, JP, um, but uh, you are Tack Attack. You were Tack Attack for a while. I'm sorry, Tack Attack, because I forgot about you, and I uh, hope you don't take that offensively. But we have a Babero on the field, and I'm gonna click Aqua Jet because, considering that I brought SD before against JP, um, I don't think he'll allow my Babero to set up freely. So either he's gonna stand and click Earthquake or Superpower, or he's gonna switch out. But here I'm gonna click Aqua Jet, just thinking that he might fear the SD. He does switch out into Milotic, which is totally fine because I built this Babero to completely set up on this Milotic. So here I should outspeed. I'm gonna go for my substitute. I do outspeed, and this is perfect because he goes for the Toxic. I do get my leftovers back. And this is definitely the scenario I was planning for. With my EV spread, I should be able to take a Scald. I should be able to take a Resistant Scald. And he showed Toxic and he has to have Recover. And then I don't know what his other fourth move would be. The only way this doesn't work is if he has like some other neutral attacking move like Dragon Pulse or HP Grass, which would be super effective. Or he has like Dragon Tail. Dragon Tail wouldn't force me out because I'm buying a Substitute. And if he has Haze, Haze would be the main thing that would, set, that would mess this up. So here, I'm going to go for my SD, and with my simple ability, I will be able to get to plus 4. He brings in the Mew, and this Babero is about to show the ancestor of all Pokemon the monster it created. This is your descendant. You created this beaver, this Aqua Jet return beaver. This this beaver just blew back. It's great, 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 great grandmother. I have no idea. But I just got rid of Mew, and apparently, I found out after the match that I think his Mew was like Z. Earthquake or like Z, or like techno Tectonic Rage or some crap like that just to handle Drapion. So that's really great prep on his part. I want to commend him for that because I would have brought in Drapion because Drapion is my initial switch in. So just using, just setting up with the barrel against my loading and forcing the mute to come in, that's amazing. Just simply amazing. And he has an headbutt, so he had to have Earthquake. So he was definitely offensive. But here he brings in a Dawn fan, and I'm not gonna risk. I'm not gonna risk, uh, I'm not gonna waste my time just like clicking Aqua Jet Return because I know this thing has 30 most likely, and I want to preserve this thing for later on because if you look at the team, 4 it has 5 remaining Pokemon are weak to Aqua Jet, and one of those, and the Pokemon that isn't weak to Aqua Jet, I set up on. So this is a very, this is basically my win con, like one of my main offensive pressures, which is crazy because it's a freaking Barrel. But here, I'm gonna predict the Earthquake, I'm gonna go into my Togekiss. He does go for the Earthquake, and that is simply amazing because if you watch the team builder, my set is Dazzling Gleam. Encore Roost. Nasty Plot. If I can Encore this Dawn Fan into clicking Earthquake again, I can get a free Nasty Plot up and I will potentially be able to kill something. I can kill the Diancy, potentially. I can uh, pressure the Milotic and I kill the Mamoswine. And with the Charty Berry, I should be able to Elko either Diancy or Terrakion. So here I'm going to click Encore. Unfortunately, he's going to switch out because he said he wanted to preserve his focus, his uh, Sturdy. But here I am Max Speed Timid and he probably didn't realize that, hence the why he didn't go for Ice Shard. So we are able to pick it off with a Dazzling Gleam. He probably wasn't expecting me to be a speedy Togekiss, but we are because we we be jetting through this whole entire battle. I don't know, Jet Jet je, je Boy. Like you, everyone, anyone saw like JJ the Jet Plane? That was very scary. Like you ever seen those faces on those things? Like it's freaking. I don't even want to think about that anymore. Like apparently I liked it as a child, which is crazy. I mean like freaking Teletubbies. Like that's a different one. Like that was freaking awesome. But he brings in Diancy. And I'm going to preserve my Charty Berry because that Terrakion is Scarfed. It could be a problem. So if it is Scarfed, I'm going to preserve my Togekiss for later because it does have the Charty Berry. So here I'm going to switch out into my Pseudo Widow. I should take any two hits that this Dianti throws at me. And he goes just for the Substitute. And that's actually great because Woodhammer didn't Oko anyway. So I can click Woodhammer, take a hit, take less than 50% from a hit, break the sub, and click Woodhammer the next turn, kill it off, and live any hit. The only thing... The only thing he can like, do is like, is, like physically, max physical offensive with Diamond Storm. That would 2 kill me, I think. 
But here I was simply go for Woodhammer. He goes for Moonblast, not Earth Power. And we slurp that up. Schnitzel is here, making its debut, taking on Tier 1 Megas out here. And like here, he goes for Diamond Storm. So the only way this doesn't work out is if he gets the plus 2 defense from the 50% chance or he pulls out a random reflect. He goes for Diamond Storm. I hope for no defense increase. I'm going to go for my Wood Hammer. Goes, he gets the freaking... Okay, so I'm going to tell you right now. We drop Pseudo Widow next week. After this battle, we drop Pseudo Widow. And I was so freaking hyped for Pseudo Widow to make its debut, get a damn kill. And it's not going to get a kill. Sucker Punch ain't going to kill. I'm not going to bother. And he goes for Moonblast and Pseudo Widow dies because of a defense increase. So yeah, that, that was kind of stupid. But it's alright because Pseudo Widow... Even though it was the first to die, put on a lot of pressure on this Diancy. And you gotta get you gotta give props for the freaking tree, man. For the freaking candy bar green tree, alright? So we bring in Peter, we outspeed his whole entire team, unless that's right, can scarf. He has no switch decisions, I'm gonna go for my grass knot, and we do kill the Diancy. Crit did not matter, I think I was gonna die anyway. But here he brings in the Terrakion, and I'm gonna preserve this as of for later in case my loader becomes a problem, but I do have a semi sage, so I highly doubt it. But um Apparently Trick Room on Azelf was apparently useless, but it's okay. I am going to go ahead and go into my Drapion. It's my most expendable Pokemon at this point. He does miss a Stone Edge, unfortunately. And, um, exp I don't like, I didn't know if he was Scarfed or not. Because the Stone Edge missed, so, like, I don't know what he is. He could be Bandit, he could be Scarfed, he could be Life Orb for all I know. So, predicting, I'm going to go for the save play. I'm just going to click Aqua Till. He apparently switches out, so he probably is Scarfed. I go for Aqua Till and he brings in on my Lodic. And this is totally fine, because since the Dawn fan still has its Sturdy, I can break it with this toxic spike that I just put up and all I need is one toxic spike. I just need one. And it's one one in the, one is better anyway in this scenario. I'm gonna go for knockoff. I'm basically sacking my Drapion and going for knockoff. I'm pressuring this my loaded to the point where I'll force it to recover. And on the following turn as it recovers I will go into my Babero as you guys see. He does go for the recover. I do outspeed and this is basically GG at this point. He he really doesn't have anything to take this on. I forced out the my loaded last time so he doesn't have haze. Skull doesn't break my sub and i mean you guys can just watch i am this you can just watch this but bro set up i am plus four he gets a crit scald on the second scald he goes for which he should have gotten the first time if he wanted to like pressure me more but i'll go for substitute again skull doesn't break my sub and it's gonna be kind of repetitive but here i'm gonna get to plus six just to be safe just to be safe sort of i, I probably should have just stayed at plus four we are a plus six for barrel and we out here we have four legs we got this horizontal 90 degree perpendicular tail on our ass and this my look is still going for scald we do outspeed we're at a decent amount of hp and this is where babero just cleans we go for return my loader goes down and gg i like it's it, like i wouldn't say gg this early but like realistically there's like really there's really not that much he can do i go for aqua jet it doesn't no cool but that's fine he goes for rapid spank gets rid of the toxic spikes but realistically i just wanted dolphin to die and that is a kill for drapion because it, it died to poison i go for aqua jet unless he's sashed he will live and take me out but he's not sashed and Justinian, the Barbaro, is going to pick up a nice 3-0, not 3-0, but like, it's going to take up a nice little sweep in the end. It, this is Barbaro, I swear, I did not think I was going to use it this well. Like, honestly, like, just looking at the same, I had a pretty good matchup overall, so that probably gave it a lot of, uh, momentum and, you know, just a lot of motivation to bring it. But, um, just like, just, oh my god, it just put so much pressure. Like, it set up really early against the Milotic, I forced the Mute to die, and then... Like, it legit set up in the beginning, and then late game. Like, just, like, towards the end of the game. Like, it wasn't, like, it wasn't even existent towards the middle of the game. But we do pick up a nice full 5-0 victory, which is huge for us, because now we are 2-2. Two and two. I don't know our differential exactly. Let's see. We lost, we lost one, we lost 2-0 against, um, what's his name? We lost 2-0 against Nick, so that's 0-1 minus 2. We won 1-0 against JP, so that's 1-1 one one minus 1. We lost against Magma 3-0 or 2-0, I believe. So that's one and two minus three, and now we are two and two plus two, I believe. If I did my math correctly, we are two and two plus two as a week four, and that is simply amazing. I'm kind of sad because five of the Pokemon were weak to grass, and Simi Sage didn't even hit the field once. But it's okay. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe if you guys enjoyed. Like I said, and I will try. I'm gonna try check out my opponent. I'm gonna check out if Tack has like a YouTube channel or Twitter. Hopefully I remember to put it in this time, but other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next encounter.